one term that we keep reading in papers again and again and again is gdp growth gdp growth goes down gdp growth goes up gdp is this much india is now in the third position no <laughs> never third position sorry india is in the fifth position india is in the seventh position will indian gdp become bigger than the uk gdp and what not gdp 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 what is gdp gross national product big deal what does one understand by gross national product that doesn't explain anything at all. What is GDP? GDP is a measure, a measure of income of a nation. And the reason why it is called GDP is because income of a nation can be measured in many different ways. One of the ways in which the income of the nation is measured is the production method. So the domestic production you are trying to find out the domestic production of all the goods and services, every single thing, starting from a needle to a tank, starting from the services of a mochi, the person who repairs your shoes, to the services of the Reserve Bank governor or the services of a very well-known advocate or something everybody's income everybody's uh, they are producing services so everybody's production of services and all the goods that are produced in the country gdp counts that and how does it count it now i you would have a cupboard produced and you would have a fan produced and how are you going to be adding fan with cupboard by converting it into a value the fan costs say 2000 rupees and the cupboard costs say 8000 rupees so then the total production is 10000 rupees so just like that you would be looking at the value of every single product that has been produced in your nation and then you would add that all up then you would look at all the services that people have provided and how much they charge for those services you add all of those things up and then you get the gross domestic product because it looks at production the total production of goods and services in a given period within the boundaries of a nation gross domestic product understood so it is looking at total production total production of final goods so if a building is half built GDP will not look at it. When the building is fully built and the apartments are sold, then GDP will calculate it as production of a building. Okay, so you are making bread and you have just bought atta and oil and everything and it is sitting in your kitchen. It is not counted in GDP. It will be counted in GDP only if it is a final good. The other thing is that because you are calculating the monetary value of this goods and services of production so that means that it should have a monetary value not everything has on a monetary value right when we were talking about air and water and all we said we don't count how much we have any of this because we don't pay for it so anything which does not have monetary value is not counted as far as GDP is concerned. Okay, so GDP would not count, as I said, in air and water. GDP would not count um, the services which are provided free of charge. So the voluntary services of volunteers, GDP will not count that and things like that. Okay, so it's monetary value. It is total production of final goods and services. That's what GDP looks at. There is another concept which is called gross national product. So when it comes to gross national product, you are looking at the production that your companies and your people made abroad and brought in the income of that also into the nation. It is not the production which happened here. It's a production which happened there, but it happened by the people who are staying in your country and they are earning income out of it. When you count that, it becomes gross national product. 
and why do nations why do some nations use gdp and some nations use gnp it's very simple it depends on your economy as far as india is concerned for india the international trade is very small amount of the total gdp but as far as usa is concerned it is a substantial amount of its total income so when you look at us you will find that they are looking at gnp when you look at india you see that they are looking at gdp okay so that is the production approach where you are looking at gross domestic product you don't even call it national income though it is a measure of national income but it is called gross domestic product because you are looking purely at production so this is the first approach for calculating national income which is um, finding out the total production of goods and services in a country and gdp initially when i was a student gdp used to be counted only for one year and it wasn't counted for lesser amounts of things but with advent of computers and when things became much easier to measure it became far easier to start measuring gdp in a smaller time periods also so now you have quarterly gdp a lot of times you have month on month production also all of these things have become possible because now you can play around with data far more easily than it was the case before where itne bade bade kitabe leke itne moti moti kitabe and you are summing up everything and all it's not an exercise which is very easy to do physically when you have so many books and so many figures and everything it takes a long time and that's why gdp figures used to be uh coming only annually but now it is possible for us to calculate for other periods of time there is another approach by which you can measure gdp it is called income approach so we are talking about national income so instead of saying that how much you have produced in a year you say that how much the people of these nations have earned has income so the carpenter has earned his or her income the lawyer has earned his or her income the basket maker has earned her income and what not so everybody has earned income and you just calculate all those incomes and sum it up and of course that also would become the national income no problems with that and um, uh, economists say that there are four types of incomes that exist and you take any income in the world any income and it would come under one of these its wages rent profits and interest i'll say this once again wages rent profits and interest okay so these are the four things and these are the four things which uh, now let's just understand what they are so as far as salary of a person is concerned where do you think it would come think about it wage yes okay theek hai uh, okay then uh, i have given loan to somebody and uh, i am charging some interest out of it so where would that go of course interest i mean interest interest same thing right so it comes under interest okay so similar thing is true about rent that i rent out a property and it comes as a rent i rent out a machine i rent out a building i rent out a car i rent out a tractor i rent out the water pump for irrigation in fields all of these are rental incomes hmm. and then you have of course profits so people who are doing business would be earning something through sales but then from that money they will have to meet their expenditure the difference between the revenue and expenditure is profits that means that whatever you earn out of selling an item you have to first deduct the expenditure that you made for selling that item and then income minus expen i mean sales or uh, the revenue which is uh, price multiplied by the quantity sold so revenue minus the expenditure that you make to make this business happen gives you the profits so this is the profits so in all of this where would the um fees of a lawyer or uh, uh, yeah lawyer is the best example fees of the lawyers will come where it will come in profits because it's not wages 
Nobody's paying him or her. She's earning it on her own. Whatever the self-employed people get, it always comes under profits. Okay? Because they also make some expenditures. So those expenditures are deducted from the income and what they get is their actual income, which is profits. Okay, what, what about us? The, uh, the income that a professor gets? Yes, yeah, you got it, salary, right? So wages, wages, rent, interest, profits. Take any income under the sun and you will come in, in uh, it will come in one of these four classes. Now, why don't we use this approach to measure income? Why do we say that you have to look at production? It is so very difficult to find out ki whether that person has grown 10 kg of uh, apples or whether that person has grown 20 kg of apples. So difficult. But then it comes is even more difficult. Uh, just one moment. I will be coming in a moment. Just one moment. <laughs> 